and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Church, let's sing that chorus together, if you would. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. King of heaven, come. for his glory isn't that the best way to do it and sometimes it, we have to go through things sometimes we have to go through the crushing and the pressing as this song says but through all of that he is the potter and we are the clay Amen. and he is making the vessel through us for of us out of us so let's just worship him this morning and give him everything that he has given to us give it back to him In the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need 
to understand Make me your vessel Make me an offering Make me whatever you want me to be I came here with nothing But all you have given me Jesus, bring new wine out of me In the crushing, in the pressing You are making new wine In the soil I now surrender You are breaking new ground You are breaking new ground So make me your vessel Make me an offering Make me whatever you want me to be I came here with nothing But all you have given me Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Oh, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Because where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. My old flames carry your new fire today. Cause where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new. Make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Bring new wine out of me Cause where there is new wine There is new power There is new freedom And the kingdom is here I lay down my old flames To carry your new fire today Sing it out, where there is new wine Cause where there is new wine, there is new power, there is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. This is our prayer. Make me whatever you want me to be I came here with nothing But all you have given me Jesus, bring new wine out of me Jesus, Jesus, bring new wine out of me Oh, Jesus, bring new wine If you try 
Jesus didn't just come to be a babe in a manger or just to bring glory to himself. All those, both of those things are true. I'm glad he came to help us. Amen. I'm glad he came to, to, to people he knew was broken and, and that people he knew would mess up and, and make a mess of things. And still, he, God, believed that we were worth sending his son. So today, I pray that. He is all those things to you. Whether you're saved or not, He has been. 
Because all of your life, God's grace has been with you. And now that you know Him, maybe you've just been saved. Now you can feel it and know it and appreciate it and praise it. Father, thank you that you are God. You are God. We are not God. There is no other gods. We have no one else to praise in life or in eternity but you. For you have saved us and changed us and made us like yourself through the precious blood of your son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. And thank you, Father, for allowing this to happen for our soul's sake. We praise you and we will All of our lives and all of our days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. You can start turning to Matthew chapter number 5. As some strong men get this pulpit for me. If you don't mind. Matthew chapter 5. You need to be here next Sunday. Because next Sunday. There's going to be a a black pig on stage with me. And. uh, we're going to kiss this pig next Sunday because we reached our goal for our building fund. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. Now, uh, they, they wanted me to kiss a big pig in a hog pen. I said, I got one better. We'll just get a little pig and bring him to church. And so uh, this won't be one that's been wallering in the slop. Hopefully not anyways. Uh, and uh, we haven't even counted the change yet. So there's the change thing out there. So when you go by it today, look at it, figure out how much you think is in it. They're going to do a Facebook contest this week and uh, do some uh, guessing at that. And then whoever guesses maybe how much is in it, then you're going to get a gift certificate uh, to a local place uh, just for some fun and games as we praise God for what he's done. They're going to take a few days to count that, and then we'll, we'll do that for you. And we're just going to have some fun with that. But praise God for all that he's done. And uh, all that he's continuing to do. I hope you're praying for your one still. On Wednesday nights we're uh, preaching about Jesus' one. And showing how he went and met them where they were at. And helped them. And, and we just want to continue to think about and pray about who the one is that God has put on our heart. That he wants to save at this time. And we just praise God for uh, him saving us. And we want him to do it for other people. Matthew chapter 5. Uh, We've got a message today titled, Tongue Meet Heart, Uh, kind of a play on words there. But last time we preached on anger, we preached on the heart. And and Jesus was talking to a a lot of people who understood that if you committed murder, then there was going to be great judgment that was going to come against you. You couldn't get away with it. They understood that. They knew that. They understood the law. But Jesus was kind of taking it a step farther. He was talking about thoughts. He was talking about malice. He was talking about intent. He was talking about what goes on on the inside of you. And then he was saying that stuff will also bring judgment. You know, anger shows itself in many forms. Sometimes we think we're over it. And I don't know about you, but I've had some moments here in the last couple months where I got angry and I thought, I'm not as far along in life as I thought I was. <laughs> you know, you just sometimes things are revealed because uh, the pressure you're put under. A wise lady, Miss Jane Turner, told me years ago, she said, Matthew, do you know what you get when you squeeze an orange? I said, well, yes, ma'am, you get orange juice. She said, you know what you, sque- you get when you squeeze a lemon? I said, yes, ma'am, lemon juice. She said, well, then what comes out of you when you're squeezed is what's in you. So I think about that a lot. I think about what God's trying to do with me. And uh, one time last week when I was in a situation I didn't want to be in, I I told the Lord, I said, thank you for putting me in this place because there must be something you're trying to get out of me. Trying to be thankful, as the scripture says, in all things give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Anger, hatred, malice, all of these things are heart issues. Today... We'll deal with the tongue because the tongue reveals the hearts. Um, You can murder someone with your tongue. And you know as I do, our tongues can be a great issue. We'll read all these verses again, 21 through 26 of Matthew chapter 25. And talk about the danger of the tongue. You've heard that our ancestors were told you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the court. 
And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. When you're on your way to court with your adversary, settle your differences quickly. Otherwise, your accuser may hand you over to the judge, who will hand you over to an officer, and you'll be thrown into prison. And if that happens, you surely won't be free again until you've paid every last penny. Father, help us understand Jesus' teaching through the power of the Holy Spirit at this moment. God, I thank you that uh, our tongues can be controlled, God. I thank you that our hearts can be changed, that our minds can be renewed through the things of Christ, and that we can be all things to all people. We can be Christ in a world that is far from Him. God, help us today. Reveal our hearts. Let us do some uh, self, uh, self-looking, self Father. Look into our own souls and see what's going on, Father God. And God, I just praise you for uh, clear teaching in the Word today. That will change us and make you more, make us more like you. God, help me to be changed, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. The tongue is very dangerous. What can be so delightful can turn very deadly in just a moment. Number one, we see the call of the tongue, verse 22. It absolutely matters how you speak to people and about people. Amen. It matters. It matters what you say. It matters what you do. It matters how you speak about others, especially your brothers and sisters in Christ. And when we see uh, them talking in 23 on down, if you present a sacrifice at the Alton Temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, in other translations it says that a brother has something against you. So we want to talk about uh, how we act towards each other in the church, but also we don't need to be calling anybody idiots or fools outside of the church. Amen. And so we especially do good to the household of faith, but we don't do bad to those outside of the household of faith. We're always to speak in ways that honor God. We are always to let our speech be seasoned with grace, the scripture says. We were always to speak in a way that God speaks. If God wouldn't say it, we shouldn't say it. If God wouldn't do it, we shouldn't do it. We should think about everything that comes out of our mouth because we will know that we will be judged for every idle word. I thought about it like this when I was studying this week. Would I say this about a person to Jesus? If I was having a conversation with Jesus about one of you, would I say, well, that idiot don't even come to church regularly? Well, no, I would. You you wouldn't say nothing. I mean, really, I mean, it's funny to think about that, but there's no way that I would ever say something like that to Jesus. I just, I wouldn't do it. Or would Jesus, if me and Jesus were talking, would he say, well, them idiots don't even come to church regularly? No. No, he wouldn't. Like, we have to think about what we're saying. We have to think about what we're doing. We have to really think. If you call someone an idiot, the word, other translations, when I was growing up reading the King James all the time, the word was raka, R-A-C-A. If you say to someone Raka, if you say to your brother, it was a, a, a term of contempt. It was a, a, a thing that you were saying that they're, they're dumb, they're foolish, they have no understanding, they, they don't have any sense. Something is wrong with this person. You were saying they were empty, and you were saying they were worthless, utterly vilifying those who God had made in his image with how you thought about them. That is not a good thing. Should we ever vilify anyone with our tongues that was created by Christ and created in his own image? Should we ever vilify anyone anyway? Should we ever say what we think about anyone out loud? Should we have these conversations? Should we ever speak ill of someone God sent his son to die for? Should we speak ill of those that God sent his son to save? 
Jesus said to a people who understood, if I kill someone, I'm going to be in trouble. Amen. We all understand that. If I kill someone, I'm going to be judged. I'm going to go before the court. I'm going to go for the magistrates. I'm going to go for the government. And they're going to set a penalty up on me. I'm going to get in trouble. But now he's saying, if you're brought before the court, this is going to happen. If you say these things, you are in danger of being brought before a court. But it's a different type of court. It's a different type judge we do not or dare not trample our brothers and sisters with our tongue in that day an Israelite would be in danger of being punished by the Sanhedrin if they were saying things about someone in a false manner or saying things bad about them they would be taken before the court there would be a punishment there were three different types of punishment in this day and probably if they were caught in this moment they would be stoned they would be stoned If you hurled insults, they would hurl rocks, literally hitting you with them physically. So how serious does God take insulting brothers and sisters in Christ? The call of the tongue, number two, the curse of the tongue. If you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. How stupid they are. How dull and stupid are those people? Can you believe how stupid they are? Can you believe how dumb that, can you believe what they did, how stupid that is? You say, is that what he's talking about? Absolutely, that's what he's talking about. Absolutely. And I think about all the times that I've said things like that. I've, how I've called people stupid, how I've called people foolish, how I've talked down about people who my opinion of their character really doesn't matter, yet I will receive judgment on something that I just should have kept to myself. I'm telling people that these people are heedless morally. They are blockheads. Y'all know what a blockhead is? That was the definition in the Greek. Blockhead. Y'all don't know any blockheads. You better not right now. You better not say you do. All right? That's kind of a trick question right there. Blockheads. Apparently absurd and foolish. How? What foolishness? How foolish. But this is the same as murdering someone's name. It is not for us to make judgment with the tongue. When Jesus used harsh words, we would call them harsh, or maybe we would say strong words. The only time he used them was for the betterment of the people he was talking to. When he was talking to religious people, he would say, you brood of vipers. Now, he was calling them names, wasn't he? Yet he was doing it for the correct reason. We say it because we're mad. We say it because we're sinful. We say it because we're upset. Those dumb people, we say it not for their betterment. But for really our punishment, because it's not hurting them, it's only hurting us. When Jesus told the disciples, how long am I going to have to suffer with you, you of little faith? He was absolutely insulting them at that moment. But what he was doing was wounding them so he could heal them. We don't do that. Most of the time we are wounding people to make us feel better about us and feel bad about them. Does that make sense? Like Most of the time when we lash out and we say words, the truth is hurt people hurt people. So we've got something against that person or we've had something happen to us or that person is acting in a way towards somebody else that somebody has acted towards us and we feel like it is our job to punish them with our words. We can't do it. We will be judged it's not for us to make judgment on someone's character or their lack of with our tongue it's not our job there's only one person who can rightly judge anyone's heart and intent there's only one person that can rightly judge someone's insides I can kind of see some fruit maybe the bearing of fruit I can look at these things but actually I can't ever really tell what's going on in the inside of there just by my natural vision only God knows the brain of a man or a woman or the heart of a man or a woman he only knows So if we would learn that it doesn't really matter what they're doing, it only really matters what we are doing, and we would judge ourselves and begin with the judgment here, we wouldn't be judged for declaring a person foolish and saying, ultimately, when we say they're foolish, the Scripture's context would be saying, they don't know God. If they had had acted differently, 
They, they must not know. Those fools must not know God because they wouldn't be doing what they're doing if they did. That's not my call. It's not your call. 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, verses 1 through 5. Paul speaks on a judgment that is premature. One that we need to try to stay away from. So look. At Apollos and me as mere servants of Christ who have been put in charge of explaining God's mysteries. Now a person who is put in charge as a manager must be faithful. As for me, it matters very little how I might be evaluated by you or any human authority. Wouldn't that be great just to have that attitude? I really don't care what you think about me. Some of you need to get that. Some of you think way too much about what others think about you. I don't even care what you think. It's what Paul say it. I don't even trust my own judgment. And I can agree with that statement sometimes too. My conscience is clear. But that doesn't prove that I'm right. It is the Lord himself who will examine me and decide. So don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns. For he will bring out the darkest secrets. He will bring them to light. And will reveal our private motives. Then God will give each one whatever praise is due. Do not judge anyone before the judge himself comes back to receive his children unto himself. It's not our job. That's not what we do. I promise you at the end of the age when all of this is done. There will be enough judgment to go around. Amen. There will be plenty for everybody and we won't even have to worry about doing it because we will be the ones who are under it. See, I need no more reason to stand before God ashamed of what I've said or done. I don't need anything else for him to say you shouldn't have or you could have or you you probably shouldn't have. I don't need anything else and I have to think about this. I was studying this week and I'm driving down the road and somebody cut me off and I said, you idiot. And the moment I said it, the Holy Spirit said, don't say that. And I thought, I thought, I've known this all my life. I've known these scriptures all my life. But isn't it amazing how when God brings them back to your memory and seats them deep in your heart, in those simple moments like somebody cutting you off in traffic, the Holy Spirit says, do not talk about them that way. I had one of those moments in my own heart and life because sometimes we use words very carelessly. We think they're just words, but they're not just words. There's life and death and the power of the tongue. We understand that with salvation. So we know that every word we speak holds weight. And it holds a weight of destruction or it holds a a weight of glory. It holds a weight of praise, he said in Paul's writing in 1 Corinthians 4. He said, I'm going to give them all the praise they deserve when I come back for judgment. So there's a, a weight of praise that will come with the words. But there's also a weight of judgment. Declaring them foolish really declares me foolish. It says I'm in the dangers of hellfire or Gehenna. Besides stoning, one of the most severe punishments was burning in the valley of Gehenna or the son of Hinnon. It was a cursed place. It was a bad place. It was the, as the Israelites or the Jews would understand, the, the boat of the afterlife. It was the place of the damned. And Jesus is talking to a people saying, do you get this picture that when you speak like this about these others, you're really speaking about yourself and this people who speak and talk and act like this, this is their destination. This is Where they end up. People who speak of others as fools. Are really just condemning themselves. Why? Because number three. The cause of the tongue. Remember Matthew 12. Remember Matthew. I know this is such good Christmas sermons. Isn't it right? It's just babe in a manger stuff. We're going to get the cider out. And sing jingle bells in a little while. It's going to be so good. Matthew 12. The tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. And if a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. Listen to me. I don't care how many presents you've got on a tree right now. If you're not doing the will of God, it doesn't matter how good a Christmas you have. 
Like, I think about this all the time. Like, I'm going to celebrate, but I want to celebrate righteousness. Jesus came to bring righteousness to those who would receive it. And following, if you love me, keep my commandments. There's a righteousness imputed by God, and then there's a practical righteousness that we are to walk in every day. I told you Jesus called some people some names. You brood of snakes. How could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. He wasn't saying Hey, just don't call people idiots. He was saying, change your heart. Fix your heart. Make your heart what God wants it to be. Change your heart. It's not about just the tongue. The tongue is the outcome of what is on the inside. Everything that comes out of your mouth, people say, I hear people say all this time, well, preacher, I just didn't mean to say it. Yes, you did. Hit your thumb with a hammer. What's in your heart comes out your mouth. Get in a fight with somebody. What's in your heart comes out your mouth. Get in a bind with somebody. It is. I didn't mean, no, we mean to say it because that's why we got, it's, it, it, we got mean in our heart. Then we mean to say it. We think about these things incorrectly a lot of times. For whatever's in your heart, this is the cause of the tongue. A good person produces good things from the treasury. Of a good heart. You know what a treasury is? Full of gold and silver. Full of riches. Think about the treasury of maybe like King Solomon. That was just piled full of the richest of the rich. It, It was full of good things. A treasury of a heart that is full of the goodness and the grace and the mercy. And the the forgiveness of God. The treasury of the heart. A good heart. An evil person produces evil things from the treasury, the fullness of an evil heart. And I tell you that you must give an account of judgment. For every idle word you speak, you idiot, you fool, them stupid people. Can't believe them idiots would over and over. I've said these words in my heart and life. And what he says to these people in Matthew 12, he says... These words will either, this is the judgment thing, this is the court thing, this is the going before the people. These are judicious words he's speaking. These words will either acquit you or condemn you. So it's not that words will send you to hell. It is that the words prove whether you're going there or not. They will acquit you either... Committed the crime or you haven't. You're either, you're either innocent or guilty. Amen. That's the way this works. Your judgment for heaven or hell is not a judgment that is in the afterlife. It is a judgment that is in life right now. And when you die, you're either innocent or guilty. And you end up where you're going to end up, heaven or hell. At the moment, the rich man and Lazarus, when both of them died, they ended up where they were at that very moment. So your heart either acquits you or condemns you. And I have to think about it. God, am I who I say I am? Am I the man of God I claim to be? Am I your child? Have I allowed myself to slip? Have I backslid? Is there something going on? Is there a dark spot in my heart? Am I really yours? Is, am I your child and this is a bad spot? Or am I a bad person and I need to be saved? Because my heart acquits me. Or condemns me. My mouth acquits me. Or it condemns me. The beautiful thing is. There's a cure for the tongue. There's a cure for the tongue. In Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 36. I love the fact that God's always trying to save Israel. And he's always trying to save us. And no matter what they did or how far they got or where they went, God was always working in their lives. And he told them these words. I will give you a new heart. And I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart. And I will give you a tender, responsive heart. And because of those things, because of my spirit I put in you, you will be able to not call people idiots. Not say those people are fools. 
Not talk bad about people. Not run people in the ground. Not gossip about people. We won't spread our poison anymore. We won't spread our sinfulness anymore. The cause of a gossiping tongue might be a gospelless heart, but it might be a person that's gone far from God. There's a cure for this tongue of ours because it's directly attached to this heart of ours. But what you need to get is a heart of His. <laughs> you see the difference? See the difference? I'm born with an old, stony, stubborn heart that's going to cuss people. It's going to curse people. It's going to say these things about people. It's going to cause issue and strife and stir things up and cause issues in the church and in the community. I'm born with a heart that knows nothing more than trouble. Yet God can detach, sever all the arteries and all the veins and all this that goes to this old heart. And he can take it out and he can put his heart. That's what he does. He takes his heart and he plays it and he reattaches everything. And then he attaches this tongue to his heart. And then it's an overflow of him. Not me. I think about what John said a lot of times when he was out there in the desert and everybody was praising John. And he saw Jesus coming and he made very plain in John 3.3. 3, I've got to get out of the way. I got to decrease so he can increase. So today you might need to get a new heart. I don't know your heart. I would say by the looks on your faces that most of you have dealt with your heart and that you love the Lord and you're here at early service. So that means something, okay? You've already been saved. You know Jesus. You just might have a spot where you need to say, I need less of me. I know I've got Christ's heart in me, but sometimes my old flesh, the man that I am, Paul, said that I fight with every day. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, I'm, I want to say some things that are right, but I don't. I want to do some things that are right, but I don't. It might be that we just have to fight this flesh off and we just choose to say the right thing. We choose to be the right people. That even in the moment where we want to just say what these people are, we actually just then confess what God says they are dearly loved enough for His Son to die for them. I know they don't do right. But let's pray for them instead of talking about them. I know that we still might think this in our hearts and minds, but here's what I promise you. Close your mouth, leave it in your head, and ask God to help you get it out of your mind instead of compounding the interest by saying it also. Some people say, well, if you think it, you might as well say it. No, that doesn't work. You ever been married before? You don't say everything you're thinking. You pick your heels to die on. You choose what comes out. You choose what goes in. In this Christmas season, I think we need to think about people the way God thought about people. See, Jesus wasn't talking about tongue reform. He was talking about a heart transplant. And if Jesus and the Father loved us enough to do what he's doing at this Christmas season and come to earth for us, how much more should we be that light in our lives, with our mouths, with all that we are, to all these people around us? Let it not be said about us that we say anything bad about anything or anybody around us. Father in Jesus name. Help us now. To deal with our hearts. God I need it in my life Lord. You know the places that I've messed up this week. You know the places that your Holy Spirit convicted me. And God I thank you for conviction. God I thank you for not giving up on me. And God I just want to be more like your son. So help me to think correctly. Help me to talk correctly. And uh. God, help me to be the light on the earth that you've called me to be, Lord. Lord, I pray instead of seeing people as fools or idiots, God, I pray that I would see them as sheep with no shepherd. It's Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. God, that I would have compassion on people and that I would choose to speak life, to speak good, to speak righteously in all my words, that they would glorify you and honor you in Jesus name if you want to come every head bowed and every eye closed if you want to come today and just ask the Lord to help you with your words your thoughts the intentions of your heart and just, that's what God judges even though we don't know what's going on in everybody's hearts and lives God judges 
with the intentions of the heart, the thoughts, the, the things in our minds. That's what the scripture teaches. And so if you want to come deal with that, you can. You can deal with it right where you're at. You don't even have to come forward. But if you want to just get before God and lay on this altar for a minute, I know that that helps me when I humble my body in that position, not caring what anybody thinks. A lot of times that's a release for me that I might be humbled in a way that I need to be. People praying. The greatest confession that you will ever make with your mouth is not only thinking good and speaking good of people, thinking good, speaking good of the things of God, but if you're not saved this morning, today was a message to saved people. But if you're not saved this morning, I want you to know that the reason we celebrate Jesus this time of year is because of his entering the earth as a babe in a manger so he could enter our hearts. Jesus came to earth and he lived a sinless life and he died a cruel death on the cross. Why? Because somebody had to pay for our sins. Somebody had to pay for every time we've said this or that that we shouldn't have said. And we couldn't pay for them. But Jesus could because he was perfect. And God sacrificed his son on the cross. And his blood was the payment for our sin. They buried him in a tomb. And he was resurrected on the third day. Proving that he has power over death, hell, and the grave. Now God has placed him at the right hand. It's the place of power. And see that power that raised him from the dead. The power that's been given to him. The name that he has can save you this morning. Today if you'll use your tongue to call upon the name of the Lord. You say is it that simple preacher? Absolutely. Romans says this. If you will call on the name of the Lord. He will save you. Do you believe what I said about Jesus is true? What the scripture says about Jesus is true. Believe in your heart. Then confess it with the mouth. And that's the salvation that God's brought to you. Today, call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Ask Him to forgive your sin and cleanse you from all of your unrighteousness. Ask Him to make you His child. And to fill you with His Holy Spirit. And today, He will save you. And then you can remember this sermon. And so you can start afresh today. A lot of us have been doing this a long time. And we haven't called on to it all. And God's still working on us. And I praise God that I'm a work in progress. Praise God I'm not what I used to be. But praise God I'm, I'm not even what I'm going to be. It's going to get better from here. But today if you just got saved. Fresh, clean, slate. Justified. Just as if you never sinned washed in the blood of the lamb and today you can walk in faith in Jesus in favor with all man because you're going to take control of the tongue that God has given you as I pray I pray we just take what God's word has said today and hide it deep in our hearts that we might not sin against God Father in Jesus name thank you for your word Thank you for our tongues. Thank you for the ability to communicate and converse. Thank you, God, for giving us more chances and less judgment. Thank you for teaching us, Jesus, how to not have judgment. And thank you that we can control our tongues by renewing our minds, by pressing out the bad and pushing in the good. Thank you, God, for new hearts and new lives and new ways of life. And thank you, Lord, that some of us, even though saved for a long time, are stubborn. But, Lord, you just keep working on us. Thank you, God. Help me. Help me control my tongue. Lord, we know that the tongue is like a rudder of a ship. A small member, but controls a large object. Like the bridle on a horse. Controls the whole body. The book of James says. Help us be in control of that which you say we can. And help us not make any excuses with the tongue you've given us. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your teaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
morning and welcome to Missionary Grove. We have just a few quick announcements for you. If you are a first time volunteer, please swing by our Welcome Center where we have our connection cards. You can tell us a little bit about yourselves and turn that in and we will have a very special gift waiting for you. If you are a current and active volunteer here within the church, then don't miss out on our Volunteer Appreciation Dinner we will be hosting on December 11th at 5 p.m. right here at the church. We would like to love on our volunteers and just show you our utmost appreciation for all that you do. Today will be the last day for you to sign up if you plan to attend, so please be sure and swing by the Welcome Center and sign up before you leave. And we're very excited about Christmas falling on a Sunday this year. We will not be having any of our MGBC classes, but we do plan to have two Sunday morning services, one at 9.30 a.m. and one at 11 a.m. Pastor Matt says, brush your teeth, brush your hair, and come as you are in your Christmas pajamas. So don't miss out and plan to join us on Christmas Day. That's all the announcements we have for you this week. So please remember to share hope through the love of Jesus. God bless. Anybody else get their toes stepped on this morning? <laughs> I sure did. That was a wonderful word from the Lord. I appreciate Brother Matt for delivering it to us. Um, I don't have a paper up here like I normally do, so I just want to mention that we do have offering boxes on the back wall, um, and there's a QR code on there and up here. If you want to give online, um, you can take a picture of that with your phone or just hold your phone camera on it, and it'll... I give you a link for the website, uh, missionarygrove.com. You can go there on your computer or on your phone or wherever and give online. Um, anybody know what else I was supposed to say? Because <laughs> I don't have my paper here in front of me. I'm sorry. I left my, my notes in the back. Um, let's stand and be dismissed this morning. Please go online to find out all the information that maybe I didn't have to tell you about. <laughs> www.missionarygrove.com. Or um, and also Miss Maddie, who's usually up here at our t at our table. Our table was not here this morning, so she's going to be back by the sound booth. If you'd like to volunteer for anything and get plugged in and uh, do what God's calling you to do in this church, just see Miss Maddie. She'll be back there by the sound booth with her little tag on, and she'll point you in the right direction, get your information, and all those types of things. Okay, let's pray out and uh, be dismissed today. Father God, we just honor you. We thank you. We praise you. Lord, thank you for loving us so much that you would not leave us in our, in our stony heart state. Leave us in the condition that we're in, Lord, at, as we came into this world. Father, that you would send your son to die for us, that you would send your son to bring the new covenant and to um, give us hope. For eternity with you forever father thank you for taking out those stony hearts and replacing them with hearts of flesh that are moldable and pliable that you can work on lord lord bless us as we go keep us safe keep our family safe um, we know that you're with us wherever we go that you never leave us nor forsake us bring us back at the appointed time and let us all do your will to give you glory in jesus name amen <laughs>